live, we're live, we're live, we're live. We're live. <laughs> Tuesday night. Best night of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Dive bar comedy. Getting really divey. I'm Wild <laughs> Joe. Uh, we have a small crew tonight. Only a few comics. So they better be funny. <laughs> right. All right. And I was getting complaints last week because uh, my baby was interrupting the show and they're like, I can't you find a babysitter or put that baby in the other room. I'm telling you, the baby is in the other room as we speak. So if you hear babies crying or coming in, it's not my fault. They follow me around from room to room. I'm hiding in the bathroom right now. <laughs> anyway, let's start this off with our theme song, Carol. Carol Newell here working the tech. Woohoo. <laughs> theme song okay. rolling. Here we go. Here we go. GT. Mm -hmm. I wake up when the sun goes down. I wake up. Just really quick, Luke Lindale. Give it up for Luke Lindale. Woo -woo! <laughs> Silent but deadly. All right. Who else? <laughs> You're like, I love making parts of a fart. <laughs> Kristen Lucas. It's me. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> David Sharp. Woo -woo! Woo -woo! Clapping on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> no palms. I can still hear claps on Zoom. And Kyle Henson. Hey guys. Time. Kyle, uh, if you could turn your phone sideways, we'll see more of you. It turned me and, upside uh, down. We've got our host. It, am I, oh, I'm right there. Right hey. 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 Mr. C, looking like a Chippendale tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh yeah! I'm sure to have fun. Mr. C likes to strip, and uh, That's right. Carol my dancing is like hard. So we really appreciate it. All right, let's see uh, who our comics are, where they're from, and what they've been up to. All right, let's start with Luke Lindale. Welcome to the show. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you've been on this uh, exact show. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. All Woo! right. So where are you from? Luke, tell us about where you're yeah. from and how did you get started doing comedy? Oh my goodness. Well, first off, I'm from Montreal. I live in Toronto. And okay. so that's a, that's a big deal in Canada. Like, I don't know if you know, so Quebec, you know, we're French there or English and French. And Toronto is only English. So people in Montreal hate people in Toronto generally. Like that's, that's a thing. Can and you speak French? Start... What's that? Can you speak French? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm French Canadian. My dad's okay. Australian. My mother's French Canadian. And how did I start comedy? Geez, I started uh, stand-up comedy in 1995. Can you believe that? Yeah. Wow. And I realized today I did the math. I took 19 years off to live, just to live. <laughs> I was just living. I went to Australia and got uh, in debt, and then came back in 1998, and I just lived. I just lived. And then I started right. back in 2017. How 
did you end up on Dive Bar Comedy? Because I, I have a poor memory for like, I'm like, where do these people come from? That I <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I met you. Carol, I met Carol Newell about, geez, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago. <laughs> You're a Toronto comedian, Linda Camacho. She's, she was, she had done Carol's show a couple times. Oh, and, we've had her on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then actually, I, I did 50 shows. I produced 50 shows in March. Uh, on Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In three weeks. That's right. In wow. Three weeks. 50, wow. 50 in three weeks. I did that. Yeah. And I'm proud of it, which is weird. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. Yeah. And uh, anyways, and, and Carol had given me your name, actually. I reached out to you. And that's how we come to kind of know you and stuff like that. Like be aware right. of you, you know? Yeah, we're uh, bringing the world together. That's what Zoom is doing. It's bringing that's everybody. Right together and all the comedians from different cities don't have to travel to meet each other but uh, i bet there's gonna be a lot of traveling now that people are feeling right. a bit free exactly. i'm starting to see flyers all over the place all the comics are back up and they're posting up their real life sets and clips mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just enjoying that live audience so mm -hmm. what about you luke have you been uh going doing any live shows in canada or well or in, stay in toronto here we have a stay at home order right now but we we okay. actually had a sort of a respite back uh, last august i did some live shows uh, from august to uh, october of last year yeah yeah so we did some live shows then but i haven't done anything live since last october all right well probably getting stir crazy so got uh, us you know next best thing I'm, I'm actually pretty good all right yeah, I think he just hangs out at the bar. Yeah, you hang out at this bar here. <laughs> Some people they're like, you know what? I like this sheltering in place. I'm gonna just keep it rolling for the rest of my life. I enjoy this. So, yeah, I get you. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, by the way, Carol, uh, I forgot to uh, ask you about all your shows and how they're going. What's going on? They're Carol? going fantastic. We're still doing. Uh, Wednesday open mic at Rumi Cafe, Thursday at the NoHo Diner, inside the diner, um, Saturday, Pan Pacific Park, and then on Saturday night, I'll be starting this week at the Baja Grill in Koreatown from Ooh. 6 to 8, and uh, I will still be hosting the open mic uh, in NoHo. I will actually have a substitute host <laughs> uh, <laughs> running that till I can get there, and then on Sunday, 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 I'm not doing shit. <laughs> Sunday. I you're know. Three shows on every Sunday. You're, you're Sunday I know. You're I have this Sunday. Well, haha, ha, stop doing the Sunday um, open mic. And the Chateau decided they didn't need a host. So uh, I am free and open for Sunday shows. Let's start one. Yay. Wow. Not that you chose to take like one day of rest. No. Fuck Sunday that. Is temporarily <laughs> unfilled. Uh, you know, Carol, yeah. you clone yourself you're sending out substitute hosts you just need to clone yourself and have like a couple of different carols running shows all over town what you gotta oh, do oh speaking of which uh june 19th carpool comedy is going to be in las vegas you guys wow Ooh. cool yeah we're gonna i'm booking that right now so we're gonna have carpool comedy in las vegas for june 19th Fun. and i'll have substitute hosts here <laughs> all right mm -hmm. wow and so, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. We booked our first dive bar show, our post-pandemic dive bar show for July 27th at Liquid wow. Zoo in uh, the North Hollywood Van Nuys, Van Nuys. Area, out in the valley. Van it's Nuys. in Van Nuys. Oh. And we have a big banner uh, on the outside of the building. It looks pretty faded and, and not so great now because it's been up for a long, long time. So I got to make a new banner because I think I want to stick to our Tuesday schedule. So we'll see how dive bar comedy podcast streaming works when we're actually there on location that'll be different but uh we're gonna give it a try try to stick to tuesdays because every other night of the week carol is busy so if i want carol on my shows <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep the tuesday schedule so. i heard that sundays are open yeah oh well, that's true well, I don't for a limited time yeah <laughs> <laughs> no probably not for long yeah, for a limited time carol's uh -huh. hot in demand all right, so those are our shows coming up. Okay, Kristen <laughs> Lucas, hey. welcome to the show. Thank you. And I believe it's your first time also, is that right? I'm a noob. And uh, how did you end up on the show? I, I, my friend Kirsten Porter was on the show and I watched it, loved it. Oh. And she said, hey, you know what? You gotta, you gotta contact Wild Joe. So I said, hey, Wild Joe, what do you know? <laughs> I'm on the show. I mean, it's not easy for 
anyone to get on the show, but like no. I do it mostly through Facebook. And if I see we have like 30 friends in common, I'm like, oh, this is somebody that is out there on the scene doing comedy. We have the same comedy friends. They're, they're in. They don't have to like audition for me or anything like that. And you came recommended. So that's great. So I uh, tell the people where you're from and uh, how you got started. Yeah, uh, I live in Los Angeles and uh, I had graduated college, moved to New York and asked people how uh, you get on Saturday Night Live and they told me to take classes at UCB. So I uh, did improv and uh, sketch and then the last two years I started doing some stand-up comedy. All right. Yeah. Nice. So your goal, have your goals changed or you're, you're still dreaming about uh, Saturday Night Live? Well, you know, I now I want my own show. <laughs> Oh, you know, I heard Ellen is uh, retiring soon. Yeah. Not retiring, but she's ending her show after, I believe, 19 seasons. They said, why not make it around 20? And uh, wow. So open. I was going to take it myself, but I guess between me and you, Kristen. <laughs> I. I uh, um, have fantasized about doing like a duo act. I Ooh. keep trying to like convince friends to do it. So while Joe, if you're down, we might have a it thing. Happen. <laughs> it happen. That's funny. Well, that's great. So and then how has the pandemic been treating you? You've been doing a lot of Zoom shows. Have you been going outdoors and doing the outdoor shows? Or what have you been doing? It, well, there's some days where it's like, I want to write and I want to film everything. And then there's some days where it's like, I just can't, I just can't even look at my, I can't even text back right now. Um, and uh, my wedding was COVID canceled. So Aww. we decided in March to do it this year. So now that has taken over my life and my brain. So. Yeah. <laughs> big, big plans, big plans for that big day. Oh, yeah. well, congratulations. That should well, be fun. You. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Uh, we got David Sharp muted. And uh, <laughs> he's here. He's back. You've been on before, right? Uh, I have you muted because this is my baby monitor. Uh, <laughs> just put my son to sleep. And it was one of those things like he usually goes to sleep at this time. But like, I'm trying to like rush it along a little bit so that I can like get to the show. So this wait, is. To wait, how, wait, wait, wait. How, how do you. I need tips. How do you put the baby to sleep? Like, exactly what do you do? So like, he starts talking, sleep? and I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> and they're like, I'm, more, I'm like, shut up. Is it Michael? No, 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 no. Let's, uh, you know, you just, you just read the stories fast. <laughs> Is it whiskey? All right, Max goes to the wild things. Uh, the wild things are weird. He looks at them in the eyes, and then he goes home. The end. <laughs> <laughs> It, it takes too long and then then they demand a story every single night and you want to turn the lights off and you're like no no stories tonight or you just tell one for memory i, I hate reading story I, I hate the whole thing go ahead oh i love story story time is my favorite time i love that oh uh, god the, well i'm glad you like is, it you have to make peace with the fact that they will always ask for one more story and mm. so you can leave after two and they'll ask for one more story you can leave after five last for one more story so it doesn't really matter how many you read you know, you leave, you leave. He complains. I listen on the monitor to make sure he doesn't freak out. Uh, as you can tell, all quiet. Uh, there's, there's little lights up here at the top that'll like go. Also, I don't know what's happening in my face right now. <laughs> uh, you know, so I got no lights, I'm safe. Wow. Yeah, it's like sending nudes to a guy. You send him one nude, they say, can you send me another one? You send him another one, they say, send me another one. You're like, God, how many of these do I have to take? Exactly. It's hard to take these pictures. Exactly. And what's weird is that... I'll keep uh, asking until you show your beehole. Well, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what you said. They want more. And it's like, they'll, well, they'll keep asking until you show your beehole. Carol, Even Carol if you knows. Show that, they'll probably ask you for the inside of it or, or another angle. I don't know. But uh, I have a little problem. My baby turned two... Uh, cool my baby turned two about a month or two ago. And uh, he loves boobs. He loves butts. And... Today at the, we were at Americana at Brand, but there's like a outdoor grassy area where kids run around. He went up to a girl, like a three-year-old girl and grabbed her butt, just out of nowhere, ran up, grabbed her butt, said butt, butt, and, and then oh. like walked off. And she just stood there like shocked. And I went over and told him no, but I was like, this is horrible. This is like the beginning of a like terrible Hilarious. Act. Yeah. Hilarious. He's only two. He's already doing it. Butt grab. Yeah. No, mine's two and a half and like, you know, he'll, he, he likes the butts. He'll come up behind Nana and he'll be like, this is your butt. 
<laughs> oh, he loves buds. Oh God, he's here now. He came back. My baby doesn't go to sleep. Hold on. Hold. On. Wait. Let me see what he's saying. You guys mind if he comes in the show? Yeah, let him in. What? Oh, What'd you say? I pooped. I pooped. <laughs> I said I pooped, and it's true because he stinks. Okay. Hold on. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Good work. Oh, that was so nice. He told me. That Yesterday, was the best thing ever. He insists on being naked. Like, <laughs> insists. They call it butt time, and they jump around naked. And then, uh, butt yesterday. Time. Butt time. Yeah, it's butt like time. an actual. This is my. You got Mr. C's attention. This is my good night routine. It's like you brush teeth. Then there's like 30 to 45 minutes of butt time where they're naked, <laughs> jumping on the bed. And then. <laughs> then it's like story time. Then it's like asking for things. After the lights go out, it starts asking requests. Oh God! Here, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Far away. Far. 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 Far away. Okay. Ah, uh, little fella. <gasps> but yeah, no. And and so he insisted on butt time last night. I was like, whatever. And so then I lie down. I'm. I turn on the TV. Two minutes later, he comes back with something on his fingers, and I was like, what is that? I thought it was blood. He was crying. I thought maybe he had cut his finger. He said, poop. He had pooped the ah! turd. <laughs> you can imagine. Like right on the floor in my daughter's room. And then it was like somehow all over his back, like stripes of it. He had stepped like square in it. It was like all over the bottom of his foot. It was it was on his hands. It was disgusting. I was like, oh God. Like, that's what I get for lying down on the job. Like, uh, anyway, it was, it was a mess. <laughs> A mess. Oh boy. Anyway, David, Look, sorry. Isn't that called like a blowout? Don't you guys have a name for that? A blowout or the a The blowout or... is when they're babies and it goes out of the diaper. Like exactly. the diaper cannot contain it. So this was like so, a blowout. Oh, that doesn't sound the same. The floor. <laughs> so so a blowout. <laughs> David will tell you the nuances of a blowout. Yeah, yeah. No, see a blowout, you have to have a diaper in place to blow yeah. out. So for right. example, if we're talking a car, a blowout is a flat tire. What Joe is talking about is more like just like if you were just running on the straight rims. Like you don't even have a tire on it. If yeah. you drive on the rims, what could go wrong? I'll tell you what could go wrong. Your baby could shit all over the floor. Yeah. You think you're taking little shortcuts. You're like, I don't want to fight ah. the baby and make him put on a diaper. But then next thing you know, you're cleaning shit. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. Oh God. Anyway, David. What so else? Have you been doing any shows, David? I'm going to mute myself while it's crying. I, I have not done any live shows yet. Uh, we're still, you know, keeping it pretty tight, although we're starting to feel like squares, you know, for that. All of our friends are like, oh, you don't want to come over and uh, spit into each other's noses? And we're like, no, we don't. We're not doing this. <laughs> At least another month before we start spitting in noses. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've said yes to a couple in-person things, so I, I I can see it in the future coming, and I'm going to have to get mentally ready for it. So I guess I'll have to see people again. Hmm. I, I'm one of those yeah. people that, like, if it wasn't for the whole everybody dying thing, the pandemic would have been great. <laughs> like, it was fine with me. I had a great time. I don't like seeing people anyway. I stayed home. I can do comedy without leaving my house now. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's a big bonus. Yeah. All right. Other people okay, want to get together David. in person. Then. Well, welcome to the show. I think we have one more comic. Kyle Henson. Oh, hey. How is everybody? Hey. I made it on in the nick of time. I, I saw you were here, so I wrote you just instead of the group message i wrote you individually so you would you would think that after a year of this that i would be technically inclined on like how to join into meetings but i'm like it's not working and then, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm like help anybody i'm outside, I'm outside right the party <laughs> uh -huh. so uh kyle have you been on our show before i don't remember I, I'm uh, th I'm I'm a very newbie here, but I'm lucky to be here. I, I'm enjoying it so far, and I, I watched uh, a few episodes before um, oh, cool. after I spoke with you, and uh, I like it. It's fun. Oh, good. And I like the whole I like the whole bar theme too. Like, <laughs> like it's really cool. 
Yeah, because we used to have all our shows in real bars, and then when the pandemic hit, we're like, hey, uh, it was actually Carol's idea. Let's do a virtual right. bar. I'm like, how do we keep the feeling of a bar, you know? Yeah. So. And I yeah. won't tell you what I'm drinking, but I, I have a little bar set up. We're okay. <laughs> I <got Aww>. it. <laughs> Tried and true. So Kyle, where are you from? And how did you start I'm, doing comedy? I'm from Portland, Oregon, and it's kind of like the dive capital of the, uh, I don't know, not of the world, but kind of the U.S. like that. And like Austin, you just keep going from bar to bar to bar. And like, they all compete for prices and, you know, kind of fun and uh, have darts and pool boards and um the video lottery and stuff like i won fifteen hundred dollars and you're like yeah and they still smoke inside and it's all fun <laughs> Aww. so yeah. uh what got you into stand-up um one time i so uh, i got laid off by a corporation and so i was kind of like sitting on unemployment playing video games for like a month or two and um so then i thought of this joke and usually i would just post it on social media but i didn't want my friends to like think less of me because it was a pretty <laughs> like it was about somebody like a celebrity suicide or whatever. So I was just like, screw it. I'll go tell it to strangers uh, in person. I didn't really think much of it. And then I really enjoyed it. And then I was like, when are you guys doing this again? Like next week, same time. So I, I wrote it down all the, you know, the different ways. And I just, I, I got addicted. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, that sounds like fun. Nice. So uh, have you been doing any real shows lately? Or are you sticking uh, the Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, we had one uh, in downtown Los Angeles at the Lexington. That was kind of fun. I felt like I was doing something illegal. I'm like, are we yeah. allowed to be? Yeah. <laughs> no, they've been doing it the whole, throughout the whole pandemic. Yeah, we've been doing out. The Lexington's been doing it the whole time. Yeah, yeah, they, they had a bar running the whole time. They're like, screw rules. I'm just doing it. So. Yeah, everything's yeah. been like backyards and living rooms and kind of Parks just, and parking Yeah, lots. parks. I've been to the, I like when you said Pan Park, or it's Pan Park. Pan Pacific. Or, Pan Pacific. I live right below there at uh, the bottom of the hill. Oh, so shoot. I, yeah, I've been up there a couple of times for other shows, and it's always fun. Like, uh, there's like families around, so you try not to say anything too bad. <laughs> nice. And uh, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we tell dick jokes at the park. <laughs> you should come through on Saturday, three o'clock. I'll be there. Okay, I'll put you up. Woo! Woohoo! Next are happening. All right, Kyle. Well, that easy. Welcome to the show. I think that's Thank all you. our comics. And uh, Mr. C, how's it going? You have any announcements? You got your your music video was out last week, looking awesome. Uh, movie, did you right? get any feedback on that, or what, what's been going on? I don't know. It's going pretty good. People like it and whatnot. But I'm also so old, so nobody oh. cares. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a fact. I don't care how fucking good I look. <laughs> how good I rap. Uh, so I got my Drake on the hook. It's just, you know, because I love the game. But yes, you know, Love Story is out on YouTube. You know, Mr. C the Enforcer, Love Story. Google it, M I S T A. Check it out. And uh, yeah, nothing going on. Just same old stuff. You know what I mean? Working, slaving, chasing dreams, working on films and working on a feature and. Try not to get um fat women pregnant. <laughs> okay, try not to get fat. Try not to get huh? fat. I thought you were just gonna say try not to get fat. <laughs> no, I Which don't doesn't have seem that like problem, uh, but the women I tend to have sex with do. <laughs> it's not my problem, but easy access. I'm like, hey girl, and she's like, yeah, baby. I'm like, okay. All right. We know. Let me lift this flap up to the left. <laughs> Get on that angle so I can get in there real good. Cause you got now one thing I will say in defense of big women, guys, if you've never had sex with a larger woman, big girls got bomb pussy. They work <laughs> twice as hard as these skinny hoes. I don't fuck some fine skinny women. They lay there like dead fish. It's yeah. like fucking your bed. It's like you almost want to pull out and just start beating off. Like you know what? I'm good. I don't want to be a, you know, a, a corpse fucker this week. Listen, Mr. C, I would be offended by that, except I actually have played that game where I'm like, pretend I'm a rubber doll. Like, I just want to do nothing. <laughs> I want to do as little as possible. If I can lay there and do absolutely nothing, that's like, I'm great. So you hit the nail on the head. I'm not offended because you're right. <laughs> and I must say, as a big girl, you're right. Carol's looking for that ass, licking things that don't even have names. So, mm -hmm. 
Ain't going to happen with me. I'll tell you that. I got the skills <laughs> to pay the bills, baby. That's right. That's right. I recommend Karen, that. That's Karen, right. Oh, oh boy. Come into your phone near you. <laughs> hey, serious. Hard workers. All right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we learned so much about each other every episode. All right, Mrs. T, let's get this show started. I think people are ready for some comedy. All right, good, good, good. So, all right, it's time for the Dial Bar Comedy Show. I'm Mr. C. Enforcer, a.k.a. Poppy Carlo. Thanks to Joanna and Carol for starting it off, talking to all our great comedians. And we got a bunch of newbies up in here tonight. We busting like three, four cherries in this joint. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like Oprah. That's all I'm saying. Tastes like Oprah. That's all I know. So the good thing is I have this whole strategy of how to coordinate my arts. I go by, have you been on the show before? How old are you or which state you're in? And then I break it down like that. So we're going to bring one of our first comedians up because he is a returner. And that means he's first in the game because he done been here before and he done hit the pussy right. You get what I'm saying? That's right. So you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 Right, that's right. So this next comedian coming to the stage is a bad motherfucking man, and he is cool as he can. He lays back and never has slack, and he keeps it so cool, sometimes people think he's black. So can I get a clack, 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 the man who last name cuts like a knife, David Shaw. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. C. That is very sweet. And uh, I can definitely assure you that no one has ever confused me for black uh, at all. Uh, I am ethnically uh, half white, and the other half is um, also white. I'm very white. Uh, I don't know if this lighting, <laughs> if you can tell from this lighting, I'm pretty sure I'm going to start disappearing uh, into just one big white. Uh, so we're doing dive bar comedy. That's cool, huh? Uh, I feel a little weird doing dive bar comedy because I myself, uh, don't drink. I quit doing that. Uh, I, um, I don't, I, I don't think of it as like a sad thing. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you quit drinking. That's sad. I think of it more as like, uh, I beat that level on the video game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I got the thousand points for sleeping in the churchyard, you know? I got the special weapon power up of the flask that you carry to like the family events where you're supposed to be like responsible, but you just uh, drink your flask because it's magic. Uh, I've, I've gone on to the next step, uh, if you will. I'm on, say, step, I don't know, 11, 12, something like that. Uh, <laughs> quitting, quitting drinking, it's like there's this, this evolution to the lifespan of a drinker. Uh, when you start drinking, you have to put a bunch of stuff like into your alcohol to make it taste better because it's poison. It tastes like poison. It's terrible. Uh, but so like when you're a young drinker, you have to make like big, like, like floofy drinks, you know, like you, you get the fruit juice and the ice and the sugar. Uh, but then as you start becoming a better drinker, at a certain point, you can start pulling things away, right? So at a certain point, you just need like Oh, I'm just going to have some ice and some alcohol and some juice. And at a certain point, you're like, I'm just going to have some alcohol and just ice. And then at a certain point, you're like, I'm just going to drink just the alcohol. And now I got rid of the alcohol. I don't have to drink anything at all. That's the evolution that I'm on. Uh, pretty good. It's like, it's like you know, when a, when, a, when a caterpillar enters a chrysalis and it becomes a butterfly. Like, I don't think of myself as an alcoholic. I think of myself as a pretty, pretty butterfly. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, weird thing about quitting drinking that no one tells you is that when you drink, you take in a bunch of sugar every night. Alcohol is just sugar. And so when you quit drinking, like your body is used to taking in all that sugar. So I got these like crazy sugar cravings uh, as soon as I quit drinking. And it was weird because it's like you're replacing one disease for the other. It's like, I'm not going to die of cirrhosis of the liver. I'll just die of beaties. Uh, it's maybe better, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but I will say this, I've never yelled at a nice Catholic lady because I had too many Skittles. Uh, so it's, it's like at least nicer up here. Uh, sugar. It's it, like, it is an addiction though. Like I remember there was one night like right after I quit drinking where it, it, it got very intense, this like sugar craving. I was watching TV and there's this kid having a birthday party and he had this like beautiful like chocolate cake in front of him. And he bends down and he like blows out the candles. And the next thing I know, I'm like in the bakery aisle of the all night supermarket, like staring at all the prepackaged cakes. And uh, I bought 
a $24 full-size chocolate cake because I was like, I need at least this much sugar right now. Uh, so I bought this like full cake at like 2 in the morning and I brought it up to the young kid that was at the cashier stand and he's like, oh, are you, are you going to like a, like a late night birthday party? And I was what? like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, like, are you gonna go? Are you? Oh, are you going like to, to with to your girlfriend, or you know, like a some kind of some kind of romantic thing? No, no, I'm gonna go eat this cake by myself in the dark because uh, I don't drink anymore. Uh, it was fun. You make friends. You make friends uh, all kinds of ways in this world. Um, drinking is hard uh, because I'm an obsessive compulsive person, you know? So like a lot of people are on the dimmer switch. I'm like a light switch, you know, either 100%, 0%. And my problem with the, they call it OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And my problem is the name. Uh, I don't think it's a disorder. Uh, I think it can be in the wrong hands, but really it's a superpower. Uh, you've heard of Clayton Kershaw, right? Uh, super baseball pitcher, uh, Everybody loves him, pitches for the Dodgers. Um, here's the thing. He wakes up at the same time every morning. He eats the same food every morning. He has the exact same routine every single day, and he's used this to become one of the best pitchers on the planet. Uh, he is not a great athlete. He is an unmedicated obsessive compulsive, right? Do you understand? The terracotta warriors of Qin Shi Huang in China, a 10,000 different terracotta statues. It's a work of art that has withstood the test of time because there was one Chinese emperor who had OCD, no access to medication, and unlimited power. What does he love? Terracotta warriors. He made 10,000 of them. That's what you can do with obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, people want to medicate it, I say weaponize it. Use your powers, all right? Uh, some closing sentiment that uh, you know brings us all together, or whatever. Thank you, guys. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Brian Foster, David Shaw. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. And I'll tell you, David dropped some jewels, and he showed us that he's a better man than me. Because when I see a chocolate cake, I just start to masturbate instantly. Oh, I thought you were gonna say because like the 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 weed or the alcohol, but no, it's because because uh, I don't masturbate into the cakes. Okay, uh, that's what it is. No, no, you don't do it into the cakes. You do it before you eat the cake. I I keep them separate usually. Different, uh, oh. you know, like on a, like you know, say obsessive compulsive. You like to keep the things on your plate uh, separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, sounds, it sounds like when America was great again. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> And actually, I want to slightly defend my conservative brothers. I am actually a, a 30 year Democrat that has now become an independent. Oh, shit. Oh, what on here? Joe was, Joe was uh, like, I don't want to hear your political opinions. Uh, right, right, I, right. I, I, but I only I'm have actually myself. slightly defend these guys. Uh, I'm you, Mr. C. I'm going to tell you why <laughs> they say make America great again. It's not because they used to whoop a lot of ass on people like me, even though I'm sure that was great times, right? <laughs> um, what they're actually talking about is before the 50, before about 65 and 70, before civil rights hit, before women's, whip hit, li women's lib hit, men like the Wonder Years, you know, with, with Kevin Savage, men used to be able to take care of a wife, two, three kids, send them to college, get them a car on their birthday, get them all the things they wanted, take a vacation every year. Remember Christmas vacation where Chevy Chase was about to kill his boss because they didn't give him a $2,000 bonus? <laughs> Remember that? That was when America was great. And then what happened is these corporate scumbags used to give a one guy enough to take care of four people, five people. But then when civil rights came in and women's lit came in, they said, oh, we got a whole new set of employees to work with. Instead of paying this one guy seventy or $100,000, I'm gonna pay all of them 45,000. And if they don't take it, somebody else will be glad to get it because now we've tripled the job market with adding all black people and minorities and adding all women. And then they robbed us like Bernie Madoff for the last 30 years. And that's why we're reaching a point of superinflation. But we'll see how that happens. 
So round of applause for Green Lynch. Put, put a necktie on a guy and he becomes an expert, right? <laughs> Welcome to political hour. <laughs> so what can I do? You know, you got to free people. And by the way, vote for Carl Anthony for president. <laughs> That's right. Don't, don't let the cocaine and weed bother you. It's a good, totally that's a good cool. slogan. That's right. So <laughs> it is a great slogan. <laughs> so another round of applause for everybody for David. Show <laughs> So I think that's right. So we're gonna get right up. We're gonna go to our next lady. So now we're into our first babies. It is cherry popping time. So <laughs> get your lube out and get your condoms ready. You know, because this one's coming up. So we got a lady coming to the stage, and I like her name. She is super cool. I'm gonna look at it a couple times so I get it right. So this lady actually reminds me of when I used to be a Sixers fan. We used to have a coach named John Lucas. And he used to be the guy that brought all the drug dealers that were failures in the NBA to your team. So I assume this woman does the same, but maybe it's to her vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't have no idea. I don't know, I don't know. I just know that my people choose poorly. That's what we do. I, I haven't dated in 10 years because I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Oh my God, I pick horrible women. Horrible oh, women! But I digress. I digress. So you guys ready for the next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Woo! Yeah! yeah. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. So gonna get a clap, 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 clap. This lady is known for being so cool. She don't mess with no fools and she always doing things in school. And her name is KL. Can I get a clap, 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 clap for Kirsten Luca? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. C. Thank you so much. Um, I don't recruit anyone to my vagina. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm engaged and uh, you've heard me say it, I'm getting married in 18 days, which is not stressful at all. Um, <laughs> there's this nasty rumor that people who are engaged like to say they're engaged a lot and squeeze the word fiance in as much as possible. Like, my fiance and I will have the steak. Uh, my fiance and I are gonna watch Beyonce. You don't say. <laughs> no, my fiance. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, I would never do that. Right, fiance? He's, he's here, <laughs> the guy I'm engaged to. <laughs> <laughs> and we dated for years before we got engaged, my fiance and I. Um, and our wedding, as I said, was COVID canceled. Uh, so when the wedding date does finally happen, it will be a wedding and a 10 year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Since we've been together for so long, uh, it's not a secret. We're getting older. And if I'm being honest with you guys, um, with each passing year, I do worry, um, because we are less likely to have a healthy, viable, um, or even get to have a wedding shower. Uh, people are starting to think that we are old enough to have our stuff together and we just don't we have one piece of furniture it's a futon from college and it's stained with netflix and chill which to us means pizza because we have no other furniture we don't have a plate that isn't plastic we don't have a kitchen table uh silverware uh we don't need niceties nance we need we need knives. We actually need things for the, from the shower, please. <laughs> um, brides have been accused of trying to make people cry at their wedding. Um, if you come to my wedding and if you like see my dress and you hear our love story and it doesn't make you cry, it's fine. Um, because behind our altar, I'll just have a moving love song recorded by like a deceased relative and it'll play in a loop with some sad scenes from, from Lassie and Mr. Holland's opus, Big Daddy. And if that still doesn't make you teary, then I'll just show a graph on income inequality and impending doom of climate change. There will be tears. It can be joy <laughs> or sorrow. It's up to you. Um, and they, as I'm in the middle of planning, I have learned that weddings are as expensive as everyone tells you they are. And the biggest expense is your catering bill. So you have, you know, your venue, your clothing, transportation, whatever you do, put that all together and multiply it by a, a, at least a couple. That's your catering bill. 
um, so you've decided to invite your best friends and your closest family to a hundred and ten dollar a plate meal so they can say she chose to serve that <laughs> <laughs> luckily I had a friend who she told me that she lost 37 pounds she was doing an intermittent fast and mm. uh, that uh, basically it's not eating for an extended amount of time and she told me it's not starvation because it's called intermittent fasting. And I was like, ah, that I could serve intermittent fasting to my guest at my wedding. <laughs> and I cut my catering bill. All I have to do is I start a timer and at the end of the reception, <laughs> yes, for five hours. So they get a trendy LA meal. I don't have a big catering bill. Everyone wins. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I have learned uh, in the process of the wedding planning is uh, I love wedding veils and I wish that there were more opportunities to wear veils like personally I feel like a mask makes you look like younger and mysterious but like you put a sheer veil over your whole head I mean game changer <laughs> so <laughs> was looking at the history of the wedding veil and it was intended to hide the bride away from evil spirits who might try to thwart her happiness. So I was like, that is alone is a great opportunity to wear a veil. <laughs> Anyone can use it, <laughs> you know? We're, we're gonna be going to parties again. I don't know, everyone's comfort level is different but it's gonna happen and you're gonna have someone come up to you at a party and they're gonna be like, hey, Mary, right? No. Ah, oh, wait, Mary. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you do for work? <laughs> and that's a perfect opportunity for you to whip out your veil and you can just say like, Hey, sorry, Edgar, your horrible small talk is thwarting my happiness. I am unavail. <laughs> <laughs> so with my many years of uh, my monogamous relationship. I have friends that are like getting into relationships or wanting to date. And they've asked me like, how do you do it? So many years, the same person. Um, the trick is that you have to keep things spicy. Cosmo is not wrong. Um, my dude gets it. So the other day he came in and he had this really sweet, fresh haircut. So I was like, mm, this is going to be nice. <laughs> And he was obviously feeling a certain way because he comes like right up to me from the door and he's like, hey, baby, I thought about you the whole car ride home. So yeah. I jerked off the road, and pulled in a trip. <laughs> I'm going to make you dinner tonight. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And after dinner, I'm going to do that dirty thing you like me to do. Addition. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the kind of stuff that keeps it going. <laughs> and as, as that sounds, I understand that um, monogamy isn't necessarily for everyone. I have a friend; she's recently divorced, and she started dating again. And every time she calls me, she's like seeing a new guy. She's got a new man toy, but each call they get younger she's got it's like boy toys she's going back in time she's benjamin unbuttoning <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys nice nice that's what i'm talking about just laid it down and whatnot and just as a piece of advice your friend is probably a hoe <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> just, I don't. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm the just best saying. ladies are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear you guys are are, are engaged in marriage because marriage is important. That is how you build financial wealth in this country. Marriage does help, unless she's a bitch and she's gonna rob you and don't marry. Her. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pick well. Choose well. It's like picking the chalice of Jesus. Choose well. <laughs> choose well. Me, I choose poorly. I like them fat and angry. <laughs> <laughs>
It's like, I'm gorgeous. It's like, why you want a fat, angry woman? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But the sex is great. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This is why I'm going to be single forever. I'm going to die alone. I'm going to buy a dog. <clears throat> so I can never pay and shit. <laughs> so another round of applause for Kristen Lucas. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So we on to our next guy. And this guy's another cool guy. I really like his name. Because his name, it sounds like he's kind of bougie and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you say, I'm going to the Linda resident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Linda. I'm a Linda. <laughs> like it, it just it just sounds so pretentious. But he is a comedian. So most likely his family's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Are you guys not gonna hear you? We know. We know that you comedians were totally fucked up. And that's why this guy's about to kill this stage. Are you guys ready for the next comedian? Did I get yeah? Yeah. 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 Clap, 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 clap for LL Cool Motherfucking J, Luke Linday. Hey, how's everybody doing? You know what? I'm 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 a little bit disappointed that I that well, first off, uh, thank you, Carl Anthony, but why the fuck did you have to do all that material with the fucking fat girls? I that was gonna be my thing tonight. I was gonna go <laughs> in on that shit, man. You, you fucking did all that. I was gonna be turn them over, and I was gonna be graphic about it. And then uh -huh. anyway, I can't do that now. You know what I mean? Like I can't do that. And then Kristen talked about the veil thing. Man, I had a veil here, and I was gonna pull it out. I was gonna say fucking Beyonce twenty times. Fuck. Anyways. Anyways, let me just start off this way. And thank you, Wild Joe, for having me. Thank you very much. And Carol Newell. Anyways, I want to say this. You know, I want to start off and talk about, you know, I don't drink coffee. And coffee drinkers annoy me. <gasps> don't talk to me. I haven't had my coffee yet. It's too early in the morning. Uh, oh, I only buy fair trade. Uh, oh, I can't believe they're out of pumpkin sauce latte. Uh, I can't believe someone's not punching you in the fucking face. Like, shut up! <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know? And coffee drinkers are never happy with their consumption amounts, right? Oh, I'm a mess right now. I can't do anything. I haven't had a coffee. Two hours later, oh, I can't concentrate. I've had too much coffee. Then mid-afternoon, <laughs> oh, I need more coffee. I'm starting to crash. And then before bed, oh, my God, I can't sleep. I've had way too much coffee. And you know what? They live the same day. Day after fucking day, because uh -huh. it's the same fucking thing. Take some sad, plot a fucking graph, learn and do different the next fucking time I see you. Jesus Christ! Ah, I haven't had enough coffee. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, and you know what? You know what I don't like too is that at the end of the day, right? Like, I'll tell you what. Like, there's no logic, okay, with coffee drinkers. Right? There's no logic, okay. I'll tell you how disgusting coffee drinkers are. You guys know the most expensive coffee in the world is the Keep Keep Ad Coffee, okay? It costs a hundred dollars a cup. That's right. Coffee drinkers are so fucking crazy. They will, and you know how it's made? The Keep yes. Ad is like a monkey, okay? It eats the coffee bean and uh -huh. shits the coffee bean, and then people <laughs> take that and make coffee out of it. <laughs> oh, buy it. What the fuck? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? I think coffee shit. These people fucking drink coffee made of shit. What is your deal, coffee drinkers? Uh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. All right, on to the next thing. You know what, guys? I don't know if you guys are talking, okay, while I've been talking to you. I don't have eyebrows. Yeah, that's weird, right? Yeah. You know what? And I have pictures of me as a kid, and I have eyebrows. And now, no eyebrows. I look like a fire survivor. I've never been in a fire. What's going on with me? I don't get it. And I went to the doctor, right? I'm in the doctor. And I'm like, Listen, like, what's happening with me, right? There's something weird, man. Like, I used to have, like, a lot of hair on my arms. Gone. Legs, lots of hair. Gone. Like, and now my eyebrows. Like, I said to him, what's going on? Is it some sort of weird skin thing? And he said, yep. Then he just kept talking. He moved on. <laughs> like, what's wow. happening? I have no idea. I'm dying fucking from the outside in. My fucking hair or something, you know? <laughs> anyway, so I checked it out, right? And you know what? Like, as I got 
got older, like I thought, sure, you know what? I'll get gray hair and things will sag. That makes sense to me, right? But I didn't think the sagging would occur in my fucking eye socket, okay? Because if I lift this up, oh my God, there they are. They're right there. Oh my God, they're like in my fucking cranium. Like what's happening, you know? Anyways, so I went up to my wife, you know, I was checking it out and I was like, should I be concerned that I don't have eyebrows? Like, is that even an important thing, you know? <laughs> people, and I noticed that the reason people have eyebrows is that you can use them to send that you're like a signal to other people that you're having an emotion, right? So, anyways, so I realized I can't do that. So I went to my wife and I was like, hey, listen, I'm pretty upset that I don't have eyebrows. I can't send a signal to other people. And she said, well, you don't seem upset to me. What about now? I'm fucking upset. I'm upset. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, guys, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the birds and the bees analogy doesn't work when you're explaining human sexual intercourse. Okay, the analogy is not related to how human beings have sex. I don't know if you guys realize this, but the birds and the bees analogy talks about how the, 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 the flower has to convince another species, a bird or a bee, to take its sperm, its pollen, to another fucking flower. Like, what am I supposed to be doing that? Like, how does that work, you know? I go to the park, jerk off on my fucking belly, talk up a squirrel, hey buddy, listen, if you could fucking ingest my sperm and fucking run over to that woman over there I'm in love with, if you could throw it up in your vagina, that would be amazing. Like, how does that work, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get how that operates. Anyway, the thing is, and the thing is that when my dad explained this to me, I couldn't get it, you know what I mean? So then he tried to explain, he tried to explain uh, like sexual intercourse, like with, with tree pollination. I don't know if you guys know how tree pollinates, okay? They use the wind. That's right. Like, how's that supposed to work? I go to the fucking park, I jerk off and hope the fucking sperm fucking lands into the fucking vagina of the woman I love. That's not consent, okay? There's nothing consensual in that. I can't do that, you know? And the thing is, too, is like, like, you know what? They don't even think, like, no one ever thinks about what the bee's doing, right? The bee is playing in flower cum. Like, what are you doing, you know? Like, if I said to you, hey, Luke, what'd you do this weekend? Well, guess what? I went up to a farm, I was like in a fucking chicken coop, and I was transferring fucking sperm from one fucking chicken to another. You'd be like, that's weird. But the bee, oh, they make honey. Fucking, like, the bee can do what the fuck they want, you know? Like, what's going on with the bee? And the other thing too is like, what's going on? Like, what about the flower, right? The flower is sitting there, okay? And he's in love with the flower across the way, right? Across the garden. Anyways, and so the thing is, the, the, the bee comes and everything, right? What happens if the flower goes to the wrong flower? You're like, hey man, no, I'm in love with the purple tulip, not the yellow tulip. What are you doing? You're going to the wrong place completely. What the fuck, you know? Let me just finish this, okay? In grade 11, okay, I was in love with Karen Lepicki. Man, I had this huge crush on Karen Lepicki, okay? Anyways, so what happened was Karen Lepicki asked me out. I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know what I mean? She's asking me out. And she asked me to go to a park. I was like, oh my God, that's going to be amazing. Fuck, I know everything what to do. It's fucking windy there. There's fucking squirrels everywhere. I'm going to get laid. But I didn't. So don't tell people that garbage. It's not true. Anyways, that's my dime. I'm Luke Lindale. Good night. Woo! God. <laughs> wow. Wow, we, wow, we. That was some anger. Mr. C disappeared. Oh, he's coming back. Wow. I I hope I'm not next. Carol and I signed up for next, but you're a tough act to follow, Luke Lindell. You're very angry, but I agree with you about coffee drinkers because uh, I'm not a coffee drinker and everything you said was 100% right right on hit the nail on the head so uh, all true all true all right mr c is, is coming back he must have had some technical difficulties hi mr c hey hey yeah yeah technical difficulties oh, oh shit yeah you're, you're not running for president anymore <laughs> oh, well, oh i figured my changed. technical difficulties are a result of that so. <laughs> oh my god so basically what happened is my phone got too hot and it cut off. Oh. Now I'm using my pad, which I cannot set up. So I'm going to just hold it and introduce the next comedian and figure it out. <laughs> Uh-oh, the babies are knocking on my door. <laughs> Let them in. Come in. Come in. Oh, my God. Ah! Monitor has been oh saved. The bloodbath in here. Okay. All right, I two seconds. Go I got to check. Oh, God. 
Oh boy. Oh god. Oh, I got a bloody baby. Jesus. <gasps> oh no. What? what the hell? Bloody. Okay. Okay. This is what that I really problem. bled? Yes. His nose or something. It's just blood. Okay. There we go. okay, okay. I got to I gotta mute myself and deal with this. Okay, Carol. Do you, me, do you want me to just go? All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'm organized now. I think I'm okay. Okay. Now. Okay. So another round of applause for Luke Linden. <laughs> now, the thing is, I was about to put on uh, Miss Joe. Uh, are you available for comedy, Joe? No, she's she's handling some shit, man. Okay, no, we're gonna move her up. So we're gonna move to the hardest working woman in the motherfucking city, LA. And this lady right here, she's out all night, every night. If I was her boyfriend, I'd be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? You're getting some dick, don't you? Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> I do it. I do it. <laughs> this is why I'm single. This is all thick because you can't trust all these thick women. Mm. They work hard. These thick hustlers. Thick beasts. As you know, it's my thing. So, we got this lady coming up to the stage. This is the hardest working woman, not only in LA, but one of the hardest working women in the country. She has comedy shows in the street, she has comedy shows at restaurants, she has comedy shows in parks, she has comedy shows in parking lots. She has comedy shows in Vegas. Are you ready for somebody that does everything and anything for the love of joy? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. So let me get a clap, 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 clap for the lady that loves everybody that just got out of jail. Carol, <laughs> you wear. What are you talking about? <laughs> It's me, Carol Duhall, the world's best laugh. Um, hello. Uh, you guys, it's been fun uh, this year uh, getting back to real comedy. Uh, I I've been doing it since last May, real live actual comedy. <laughs> I have not stayed home. I've not quarantined you guys, except for at Christmas time when I got the COVID. I got the COVID for Christmas on Christmas Eve, you guys. Uh, that's not what I asked Santa for. <laughs> not what I asked for it all <laughs> but that's what i got you guys and then i had to stay home with my sister for 10 days which was mm, not a lot of fun uh it was uh, a lot less like home for the holidays and a lot more like whatever happened to baby jane <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah not good times uh but you know what are you gonna do uh when you get the covid you stay home uh luckily i have a network of professional comedians that took over while i stayed here and uh coughed up my lungs <laughs> For 10 days. Uh, I was naked for five days straight. Yeah, I just, I, you know, when you get to this age, and I am at that age, <laughs> where uh, every time you cough, you pee a little, you just decide to say fuck it and just put a towel there and call it a day. <laughs> 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 that's what i did i was like i'm tired of doing laundry uh i'm just gonna stick a towel <laughs> mm, it's no fun being over 50 you guys <laughs> i uh i know i don't look at you over 38 but i <laughs> uh i I have to say the uh, Facebook and the Instagram, you guys, and the gangster app, which I listen to you guys because uh, AARP said so. <laughs> you have to say the when you're over 50. <laughs> mm, not fun. Um, yeah, I had a, a fun year last year, you guys. I don't know if anybody else did, but uh, I lost my job and my husband in 2020, you guys. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I was oh, like, is that Carl uh, Anthony's crotch? What the hell's going on? Uh, <laughs> Only I could see that, you guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I lost my husband. In a, well, I don't, he's not lost. I know where he is. He's in the urn uh, out in the van on the driveway. <laughs> in the urn in the driveway. Uh, in the van. <laughs> it's a uh, I think it's it's fair uh especially after uh, all the years i had to be the sole breadwinner <laughs> at my house 
Uh, my house uh, now is the house of estrogen, you guys, where every living thing is a woman, including the cats and the dog. And uh, none of the periods are synced up. So it's all bitches all the time. <laughs> mm, not good. Not good. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, well, so here's the thing. We were separated for a year before he passed away, you guys. So now I just don't have to get divorced. <laughs> and you guys, good news, he finally quit drinking. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we were not in love, you guys. That's what it was. Like, he was in love with somebody else. He was in love with a Russian uh, called Smirnoff, you guys. <laughs> Mm-hmm. yeah not me though that yeah i was not mm-mm. i was not his primary concern so now i'm my own primary concern <laughs> you guys um i i've been back out on the dating scene you guys for like a couple years now since we got separated and um i've been on the on the apps you guys i've been on the apps and um you guys uh let me tell you uh things have changed a lot since the last time I dated. <laughs> the last time I dated you guys was a really long time ago. It was pagers and pay phones. And now you guys, it's a plethora of penises. It's a menagerie of meat. It's a phalanx of phalluses. It's a smorgasbord of schlong. <laughs> it is a surplus of sausages. It is a deluge of dong, a wealth of wings. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a lot of dick pics. You guys. <laughs> what it is a lot of dick pics am i right kristen uh, <laughs> they love to send the pictures i don't know what the deal is with that that wasn't a thing when i when i when i was dating the last time you had to go to the to the photo place and get the photos developed and then stick them in the mail and mail them to somebody by the time they got there you couldn't go back to that photo place anymore <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, you guys, I went. I started on the apps, and I, I went to our time, which is for singles over fifty. And uh, those pictures were terrible. <laughs> wow. uh, those were not good pictures at all, you guys. It was just mostly saggy balls. <laughs> saggy balls, mm, not cute. Uh, so I uh, moved on over to the plenty of fish. I tried that and um, I hated fish before that. And now I really hate the fish (laughs) because there was plenty, but those fish were disgusting. Not uh, not of a kind that you would ever want to eat. (laughs) mm, mm, I don't recommend the plenty of fish. Uh, I did finally end up at the BLK, you guys, which is the all black dating app. Uh, Yeah, mm, those pictures are much better. (laughs) I must tell you the rumors are true. (laughs) <laughs> the rumors are true you guys uh larger than average on average <laughs> uh, that's where it is um so i uh yeah i've been on the blk uh and i've been meeting people you guys i've been out in the parks and the parking lots and uh in the cafes and the and the diners i've been everywhere you guys uh, in la doing comedy and meeting people so that's nice i like it i like it and um <clears throat> Uh, I'm, I'm an essential worker. I have not stayed home, you guys, except for, of course, the COVID. So I've been working the whole time, going to work, and then doing the comedy, you guys. <laughs> mm. I, uh, I, do, I know this is not the face of gangster rap, you guys, but I listen to the gangster rap, you guys. <laughs> I totally listen to gangster rap, like, uh, waiting for some people to leave. I got another trick up my sleeve. Step with pep to the back of the house. Looked in. All the lights are out. Try the door and it's locked so easily made my way to the window, lifted up slow because it takes time. And I looked in and then I climbed it. So, you guys, I've been listening to the gangster rap for a, minute, <laughs> mm, for a long time since before there was gangster rap. I remember when gangster rap was new, <laughs> you guys. I remember then that shit was new. Um, yeah, so uh, I was at work one day listening to the gangster rap, and my coworker came by and he's like, Carol, how can you be so black and so white at the same time? And I said, Well, it's the vitamin D injections. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I did not say that. I said, I'm an enigma, and he goes, You can't say that at work, that's racist. <laughs> I was like, mm, No, honey, I said enigma. Not enigma. <laughs> all right, you guys, that is all I have to say this week. And back to you, Mr. C. I hope everything's okay with you, Wild Joe. I know there was blood and 
Yeah, I got the blood. The blood stopped. So all right, that was uh, <laughs> startling. I showed you guys so you could see uh, what I was freaking out about. Mm-hmm. Was it just a nosebleed or what was going yeah, on? Yeah, nosebleed, but I mean, it's like a yeah. Suddenly, your kid shows up with like blood all over his hands and blood all over his face. <laughs> Terrible, you know what he was probably what happened, was he nosebleed. was probably picking a booger and he went too far. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes he hits. I don't know. Uh, the other day he put a sheet over his head on the bed and then was jumping around and then I guess he must have busted his nose into the wall because he suddenly started crying and and then I lifted the sheet and it was the same thing like blood everywhere so I don't oh, know if wow. it something or if it just happened for no reason oh wow uh, I don't know I was telling my sister uh, I, I asked his doctor about it that he sometimes gets nosebleeds and he told me what to do and I forgot it was either pitch at the top or the bottom, put the head back or forward. It was something, and, and I don't remember what it was. So I was like, this is an emergency, and I don't remember what I was, what am I supposed to do? So, but it stopped by itself, so. Oh, good. He's fine. He's fine. Yes. So uh, my towels, on the other hand, uh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Might have some stains. Might yeah. have some stains on those towels, but. Oopsie. We'll be okay. So. All right. I'm going to skip. I'm, I'll go up next week because I was just going to uh, throw something together. I'm not like Carol that has something you guys ready play, every um, week anyways. Mr. C, can you hear me? I don't know. Am I, am... Mr. No, C. I, I, I just switched you guys' place. I was about to put you up, so I put Carol up instead. I know, and then I got the blood everywhere, and, and I think you missed You're that part. You're Carol's spot. It's okay. I uh, okay. I'll prepare a set. I will prepare a set for next week. I'm not like Carol doing stand up every single night. So uh, I was just gonna wing it. But Carol's prepared. You know, you gotta practice to be prepared. Mm-hmm. Do it every day. You're always ready. That's the lesson we learned from Carol. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you guys all laughed. I was like, that wasn't even funny. But you guys are all have dirty minds. You're thinking about something nasty doing every day. But yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right you gotta do that you don't have to do that every day that's like riding a bike <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to be a pro like carol then yeah you gotta do it every day did you just call carol a prostitute what you just called her a pro we're oh we're talking joke, pro? Joke. Oh, oh, okay. like somebody really good at something i didn't mean somebody that gets paid but if she wanted to get paid she mm. would just have to charge that's all mm. you know? yeah, yeah you're i like really good to say at sometimes you like to get paid Makes i like sense. to say i'm not a hoe i don't get paid <laughs> <laughs> which is nice but honestly nothing to be proud of if you want to get paid, get paid. Oh, yes get your paper yeah. boo boo <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. and i don't know i don't know who told me who was talking, but I remember this story of these guys. I was hanging out in Vegas and there was like a cheap hooker, like a trashy cheap hooker that this guy picked up, like like every all the other girls were like call girls. They were like getting paid $7,000 for the weekend to hang, mm. to hang out. And they were all like beautiful, classy, well-dressed, like, but like sexy. And they he picked up, there was one guy that didn't have a girl. He picked up like, just like this, skanky ho in the elevator and brought her upstairs and then he took a shower and then he complained to the money guy the main guy i don't know it was in the shower and she stole the seven thousand dollars that i had for her out of my pants that were on the ground and then she just left i'm lucky she didn't take my watch and i'm like this guy is lying he had some he stole the seven thousand dollars from his friend I don't know. You'll never know if it was some kind of, maybe he split it with the girl. He's like, here's 50 bucks, just leave. And he kept the rest of the money. But anyway, I will never forget that story that this hooker may or may not have uh, scammed somebody for all this money. But honestly, I think the friend, like the the cheap friend stole $7,000 from his uh, money guy for a fake hooker for the weekend. Anyway, you guys could follow that. That was... (laughs) But uh, yeah, good times. Good times. 
<laughs> it's an easy way to make seven grand, you know, either yeah. that guy or that hooker. Somebody made up with a lot of money for uh, doing next to nothing. And then all the other hookers <laughs> had to earn theirs all weekend long, which is uh, wow. not as pleasant. Anyway, mm -mm. all right. I was good old days. Wish I was back in Vegas. Anyway. <laughs> and that means another round of applause for Carol. World's best <laughs> <laughs> Carol does it for free. <laughs> As a politician, I can never judge anybody that has to do this. Mm -hmm. it is. And I've been to Tijuana, so I'm spoiled. Mm -hmm. That's almost free. They're they're technically hookers, but they're getting next to not next to nothing. So uh, it's like the worst of both worlds. Those are not hookers. Those are fine women. Oh. <laughs> and I need my privacy. I'm a politician. For Christ. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Mr. C, are you going to strip? Hmm? You going to strip tonight? You look well, like I ready. don't know because we're, we're pretty split. We're half penises, half vaginas. A lot of these people are new. I don't want to scare them off. <laughs> um, but I do have a song I will be singing and I, I will do it in a sexual manner <laughs> but I will not be uh, opening up the six pack so, uh, <laughs> I save that for majority women now. or paying customers save it for your paying customers you know? <laughs> well I am a gigolo on the low I do it crazy for the hoe but that's a whole other thing I'm a politician of course I sell my <laughs> What we do. Oh, Kyle. Kyle. Hmm? Yo. We forgot you? No, no we didn't. I mean, I'm still here. No, he's oh our closer. God. Kyle didn't go up yet. He's our closer. Because he's, oh, he's the younger oh, okay. and newest. So okay. he's last. I see. Okay, Kyle. <laughs> That's all. So we're ready okay. for Kyle. So, oh, okay. all right. Once again, a shout out to prostitution. Another round of applause for Carol Newell. <laughs> no. I didn't say it. Wild Joe said it. It wasn't me. So we got another comedian coming to the stage. Wild Joe's going to write some new shit for us in the next couple of weeks. He's yeah. going to lay it out. So this gentleman is our closer, our last comedian of the evening. Are you guys ready to close it out? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 Well, this guy right here, he's the super talented comedian. He's a place called Oregon. And I had a guy that went to meet in high school, actually college, because I'm drunk. His name is John Turan. People from Oregon are the worst people alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is you know. They're horrible. This guy used to torture me. He used to pour <laughs> lotion on my face while I was asleep in college at Hampton University. He used to <laughs> fuck with me. And he'd be like, yo, dude, your dick's too close to me. Stop doing it. I'm like, John. You're kind of fucking weird, bro. <laughs> so apparently, you're about to get some weird comedy. Are you ready to get weird? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> For a man with a master plan, Mr. Charlie and so That's funny. I felt caught. He was like, you about to see some weird shit. I was like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was like, God, uh, he kind of took my bit away. I'm, uh, uh, and that's gonna be an awkward next six minutes. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know, prostitutes are always fun. I, I never really got the whole gist of it because I kind of don't want to do something another person doesn't want to do, and especially like pay him for it. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> But then again, like $7,000 is a lot. And then while you were saying it, I was kind of thinking like, how many Chipotle burritos is that? And I was like, do I got to carry the one? Or like, are we paying tax? Like what state are we in? Uh, did they charge for the double wrap? Anyway, uh, <laughs> what are your guys, so like some of you guys are, are parents. But I, I, I don't assume, I will assume the one with the bloody nose, definitely your parent. You good job, by the way. I was freaking out. You were like, do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> uh, so what are your guys' thoughts on circumcision? Like, I'm are you guys, it. are oh. you guys for skin or are you against skin? Um, <laughs> I don't like the sneaky snake. 
<laughs> it's kind of one of those things that like the mom just like makes she like makes the decision for the most part like dad's like hey i have a mom's like don't you fucking say <laughs> You're like, oh shit and, you know <laughs> and so uh they just get to decide and by the time that you would ask the kid like hey uh what are your thoughts on circus do you want us to like snip a little bit he's like don't touch it hell no what are you doing are you kidding me <laughs> but then like once it's not there it's like it's kind of not a big deal i actually like it it's just like you know just one solid you know, arm they're not like yeah <laughs> <Anyway, laughs> uh, it's okay i'm 100 uh, i'm 100 half black uh, like i can say that that's a math <laughs> joke um i'm so half black i'm the reason that the cops got called but i'm still the person that you want to talk to them actually when they show up <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> Hold on, I know there was a quarrel, <laughs> but all parties have subsided. <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming that's how white people talk. Like, I have no idea. I don't. Uh, I'm so half black. Um, I can own the team that I play for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so half black. I can say the N word, but I actually have to say the N word. Like, if I start dropping it too much, people be like, where to put the bag at? Put it next to his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's how black people talk. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm I'm so half black. Uh, I can catch a cab, but my <laughs> dick won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> you put that shit behind us. You put that shit on the hood of a Uber. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm hey. I'm just gonna do like ten more jokes and get out of here, so you don't have to time me. Okay. <laughs> She's like, why don't you try telling one? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, so, uh, let's see. I'm from a town called Beaverton. And oh. people always ask me, like, hey, Kyle, what's Beaverton like? I'm like, thank you so much for asking. Uh, first of all, we wear plaid. Uh, we say hi to each other. Uh, our bars <laughs> look like this. Uh, and we drink bald eagle tears. We drink tears from a bald eagle. I know what you're thinking. Logistically, how do you get a bald eagle to cry? Well, you can't do it mentally. You're not going to break the spirit of a bald eagle. He's flying like 99 feet above. You're like, fuck you. You're endangered. He's like. <laughs> but you can do it physically. <laughs> you happen to catch him in his cage. His wings are going everywhere. He's freaking out. You reach inside, you grab him by the neck. He's like. <laughs> you start choking him. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> And you just drink the tears, you know? <laughs> um, wouldn't it be awesome if Trump found out that he lost the election on Maury? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, they come back from a commercial break and Trump's like, in the case, or no, Maury's like, in the case of the 2020 election. He's got the manila folder, starts pulling it out. You can't read anything on his face. You can't tell until he reads it. He's like, you are not the president. Trump's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he runs behind face. Like, <laughs> Camera crew's following him like, get him back. <laughs> Maury's like trying to console him. Like, it'll be okay in just another four years. He's like, I don't have another four years. I already fight. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank you guys. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Give it up. <laughs> Are you right okay, Kyle? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo! 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 Super deep. <laughs> and like Kyle, I'm so black, I got bad credit. <laughs> that's, that's right. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Because the beautiful thing about Kyle is he was like, you know what? I don't understand how white people talk because I'm so black. And then three <laughs> seconds later, he said, I don't understand how black people talk because I'm so white. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful, like it's deep, it's deep. And that's what I'm talking about. This is all about unifying America. Another round of applause for Kyle Henson. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. So what I'm gonna do is right quick, I wanna plug my phone in. 
Um, so we're gonna close it out. We got all our comedians to finish up. That was our last comedian. I'm gonna sing a quick song. Uh, since Kyle talked about our um, genetic inheritance, I guess I should sing uh, the Black National Anthem Woo! <laughs> at this point. And that's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. Mm. So I'm gonna knock that out. Of course, I'm gonna do my own version of it because I'm drunk. <laughs> and we'll do that. And then we'll go over the comedian's names and we're good on out of here. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Me, 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 of liberty, let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let us resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the new day is brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day. Let us be joined to victory is won. I love you guys. Dive our company. Clap, 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 clap. I want everybody to stand, so just clap, 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 clap for all the things to get to the stage. Dive our comedy show. Wild Joe, let's get us out of here and tell us where we need to go. Carol, why are you laughing at Mr. C? That was beautiful. Thank you. Carol's laughing so hard she's crying. Carol has the world's best laugh, but right now, I've never seen her laugh this hard. She's like, <laughs> laughing like silently and crying. You you brought her to tears with her laughing. What's going on, Carol? She can't even speak right now. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> you got Carol. That's for sure. I don't know if you were trying to be funny, but you got Carol. That's for sure. <laughs> Mr. C, what is that song you're singing? <laughs> Call lift every voice and sing, and that is the actual <laughs> African American national anthem. Is that a real thing, the African American national anthem? Yeah. I mean, did they just? That's why that Carol is so into it because she's all about it. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Wow! <laughs> wow! Going to make two babies tonight. Uh -huh. Black. <laughs> Maybe she's like laughing, oh like God. nervous laughter, because she's so excited inside, or something like that. <laughs> And uh, when she calms down enough to speak, I'm going to ask her. <laughs> you hit Carol. You a button art by Carol. You hit all the right buttons for Carol tonight. Sorry, right, Carol. Can you give us an explanation of why you're laughing so much? <laughs> um. Well, Mr. C has a very unique voice. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you sending him some secret messages during the song? What's going on, Carol? Luke Lindell was sending me messages and then he was imitating how my face looked when Carl was singing. <laughs> okay. At the beginning of the song, you didn't notice? Carol was like this. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? I, don't I know. thought she looked she really weird. So that was making me nervous. Somebody got Carol going good because I've never heard Carol laugh so hard that she can't even talk. Oh my god! And then Luke was just doing the imitation of me the whole song, and I was just cracking the fuck up. <laughs> that was a great oh, song. Oh, I was you guys are all very funny. It was hilarious. Woo, you guys. Well, it was funny. It was funny. 
I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but funny people are funny even when they're not trying to be funny. Sometimes they're like accidentally funny all the time. And uh, that might have been it. But I liked it. I thought it was beautiful, Miss to see. And uh, very funny. Carol. Hilarious. Carol funny. Luke Lindell, thanks for cracking her up. You're funny too. Who else we oh had? Oh my God. Funny tonight? Oh God, we're going to get this wrapped up before the baby comes back. Thank you to our funny comics, David Sharp, Kristen Lucas, and Kyle Hansen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go see us on another Tuesday night at Dive Bar Comedy on Facebook. We're live every Tuesday, or just check out the replay wherever you listen to podcasts or at divebarcomedy.com. Thanks for watching. See us next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah.